Most of America has problems with sleep from time to time, and insomnia is a growing problem, particularly in our fast-paced lives. We don't have enough time to sleep either, and we feel stretched to try and, and uh, do as much as we can to find time for sleep, but find it difficult with all of the other obligations we have. A study was done by the National Sleep Foundation in 2013. It was called Sleep in America, and it was a poll of people to find out whether or not there was a relationship between exercise and sleep. And it was very interesting because they found that both exercisers uh, of any level and uh, people who are non-exercisers slept the same length of time. It was six hours and 51 minutes. And yet vigorous exercisers were twice as likely to report a good night's sleep and at least, uh, and least likely to report a problem with insomnia. Interesting. Exercise, we know, is a powerful antidepressant and, a, and it's an anti-anxiety drug and it also tires us out so that we need to sleep more. When they looked at this, the people who were vigorous exercisers, two-thirds of them, didn't really have sleep issues. About 72% didn't awaken early, unable to go back to sleep. 69% could get to sleep easier. And uh, that was not the same for non-exercisers. They were only 50% and 24% relatively as likely. What do these sleep patterns mean? We're looking at different kinds of, of sleep uh, if you don't get to sleep easily because your mind is racing uh, or you keep perseverating thoughts, chances are you're just uh, under a lot of stress and trying to work things out. And it may take anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes or an hour, sometimes even two hours to get to sleep. And what about when you wake up early or you wake up through the night several times and it's hard to get back to sleep? That too is more likely to be anxiety, but maybe a touch of depression in there as well. And those people who wake up early at 4 or 5 in the morning can't get back to sleep, these are the people who are probably depressed. And so that's good to know. And if you have that kind of a sleeping pattern, you may want to talk to your doctor about that. Another thing you may want to try is go to drsaputo.com. That's our website. And join the site, which is completely free. And there's a health assessment. There are 33 health assessments there. And one of them is on insomnia. And there you get a comprehensive look at what the causes for insomnia are and what you can do about them. These assessments take about three or four minutes to take. And after you have taken it, back will come instantly audios and videos because there are 2,300 plus audios and videos that I've made myself with Vicki or with a professional who's an expert in a certain area that will be used to direct information specifically or into how you fill out that assessment to teach you about your problem. It's also interesting that, that uh, sleep is, is something that, it, or exercise is something that works as an antidepressant. There's a fellow named James Blumenthal from Duke University who's done quite a bit of study on this. One of his articles was published in Archives of Internal Medicine in 1999, and there he compared the effect of Zoloft to exercise in 156 patients over the age of 50 who got 30 minutes of exercise several times a week at, at about 75% of their maximum heart rate. And what they found that there was an equal effect at six months uh, between people who exercised and people who were on Zoloft. But at the end of, of that time, uh, there was a, a change so that only a few of the people relative to those people who were uh, exercising with Zoloft, say 38% of the people who were on Zoloft had, had still had their problems with depression, whereas only 8% of those people had it if they, were, if they had done the exercise program. He did another study in 2007 that was published in a journal called Psychosomatic Medicine, and there he compared exercise to Zoloft and to placebo, and, and he had 202 depressed patients and treated them for 16 weeks. And what he found was that 47% of those people on Zoloft were helped immensely at the end of that time. Those that, uh, that were exercising had a 45% uh, improvement, and those that were on placebo had a 31% improvement. So it was only a 16% difference between the placebo and uh, people who were on Zoloft. What would you rather take to get a good effect, particularly one that's likely to last longer? Interesting uh, comment there. Uh, he also found that the non-exercisers had twice the incidence of sleepiness. So we're looking at, at something here that's, it's, that's pretty important in terms of lifestyle management. 
Exercise is not a cure for insomnia. It's something that can support the process. It's a treatment for it. But if we really want to deal with what's wrong with, with that, what we need to do is find a way to resolve the underlying issues that are leading to the challenges we have. And those aren't going to be solved by anything except understanding by going through psychotherapy or some other mechanism to try and help us. Now, there are certain things that we can do to ensure sleep that I think are very important. We want to go ahead and, and certainly exercise. And it doesn't matter what time you exercise. It can be daytime or nighttime. Uh, before you go to bed even, it doesn't make any difference. And we should have a room that's dark, that's comfortable, that's uh, relaxing for us, uh, and is cool. Uh, we should have a way of making ourselves relax, either a hot bath or some other mechanism that uh, will qu quiet us down, like some soft music. Uh, we don't want to uh, have a problem with oversleeping because oversleeping is also a sign of depression and uh, leads to us being even more depressed. When it comes to worrying, we should save our worries for the daytime if we can and try and turn off at night, but that's easier said than done. And if you can't sleep, get up for some time, do something, and then get back to sleep. And of course, if you're having problems with sleep, you always want to check with your doctor because things like sleep apnea and pain and a lot of illnesses can result in difficulty with sleeping. So back to taking that health assessment on drsaputo.com.